Hi friends, hello in the world. So excited to be here Hi. with you. My special guest, Tori. Welcome, Tori. Would you like Hi, to tell so a bit about yourself? Thank you so much Tori? for having yes. me. Sure. Yeah, sure. So um, in terms of my background, I have a 12 years experience in aid work and uh, most recently as a country manager in East Timor. And during my time there, uh, my passion evolved to be around leadership and leadership mm. uh, issues. I saw it as such an a need in the development space and also with myself. And so I just began binging podcasts and books and whatever I could get my hands on. Unfortunately, I couldn't find much in the way of uh, humanitarian leadership at the time. Mm. And that's why I started my own podcast. And then that kind of evolved into, um, in addition to learning uh, how to be a coach, then I've since the last three years started my own business and now I do coaching as well as training for leaders and the aid world uh, globally. Excellent. So amazing that you're here, Tori, because one of the thought uh, topics that I was thinking that we could cover today um, is the leading versus managing. Um, and, uh, the great part of it is that, you know, I, I guess coach people, um, who have bosses or they say they're bosses and what are the problems they're having with their bosses and how to manage that. Right. So it's a bit like, I, I feel like, uh, I could cover a lot of, you know, complaints or issues that people come up when they work with their bosses. Um, and then you could cover from the perspective of leaders or managers who are having teams to uh, to take care of or teams to work with, right? And and from their perspectives. And um, yeah, so our topics could be around looking at uh, from two different perspectives of uh, what the issues that they're saying to us that are coming up and how they're trying to solve them. And then also, what are the tools available for anyone to use them in order to solve whatever issues they might be having, right? So that's why I thought um, it's great that we could discuss this particular topic. So let me highlight some of the uh, issues that people who come to me tell about what they don't like about their bosses, basically. And then maybe you can also highlight from the uh, managers or leaders perspective so so apparently people that we don't like to work for is micromanagers I think that's like mm -hmm. I feel like that's universal <laughs> but anyway this is in the humanitarian uh, space that we're talking about uh, we don't know I mean I don't know how it's in other corporates or in other businesses but this is at least uh, my humanitarians tell me uh, another type that we don't like is perfectionist bosses who want to be things in a particular way, in a per perfect way in their eyes. And whatever you're not doing perfect as they think it, then it's a problem. Bosses who think they are better than everyone else. Mm. Of course, they don't say it, but the way people act makes you as a, an employee, I guess, assume that my boss thinks she or he is the better than everyone else. And then this creates a problem. Another one is criticizing constructively yet with a reproaching tone. A bit like, yeah, mm -hmm. you should have done this. But in a way that sounds like you're really messing it up kind of a, a tone. So again, it becomes like, like the nonverbal becomes so much of a a topic um, doesn't make decisions, uh, agrees or disagrees with higher with the um, senior management all the time. So even if they agree the whole time or disagree the whole time, creates problems. Um, and the other usuals like having a favorite person in the office or not having integrity. So these are the issues that people say 
are having with their bosses. What about you? What are the challenges that you hear from uh, coaching clients who might be in the managerial role, in the leading role, what they're saying? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, of course, you know, most of the leaders that come to me don't say things like, oh, I don't have integrity or I'm a micromanager. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, um, yeah, I think from the, their perspective, and I'm not saying that the, the people that I've coached are necessarily all or any of those things that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think where some of the 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 issues that you're mentioning uh, um, arise from is trust issues with trust. Yeah. Um, also, uh, maybe not understanding how to give feedback or mm. how to delegate. Yeah. Um, uh, another one is I think that, you know, a lot of times leaders, you know, even people who maybe that you coach, sometimes we're not sure when we can push back on our, you know, in our supervisors. And yeah. so they feel the same way. So if, you know, their senior manager is telling them to do something and then they do it, it might be because they don't feel like they can create that boundary. Yeah. Um, and so that is another one. I think also, um, I, I, I think it's really interesting. I think a lot, some of these things come down to also um, good intentions. Like for example, yeah, like um, I, you know, like the leaders that I work with, they really care about their teams and they yeah. want to help them. But at the same time, sometimes that means they end up micromanaging or they end up mm. telling them what to do. Yeah. Uh, and so that, you know, this is where I try to, to, to change their perspective a bit around mm. um, what a caring leader looks like, yeah. but also in terms of like creating your own boundaries, yeah. you know, because probably a lot of things that your coaches face has to do with um, their leaders not having very clear boundaries mm. and, and in terms of also like their own availability and time. So time yeah. is a huge one as well, yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I think when it comes to time and to just uh, maybe side note is that eternal question of how much time is enough for having an efficient way of working, um, especially in emergencies or in difficult circumstances, right? Obviously, many of our, you know, people that we're talking to work in very extreme difficult situations and trying to do best out of what's available, what's possible, and it already limits you in so many ways, right? So then the, the question of, um, you know, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't have enough time to talk about things, or other people say, we shouldn't be spending this much time talking about things, we should be doing other things. So, yeah, I, I find that there is a lot of definitely uh, drama or turmoil or problems that we think exist because of time in one way or another either we're wasting it or we're not having enough of it um whichever way so absolutely i i, I so agree on the the time issue um so then i guess the question is um so we both are saying from different perspectives that the intentions are good we want, all want in the end good things to happen. We want to help people, right? In the most difficult situations and how best we help it depends on, um, I guess, our working together in the best possible way. Uh, and what are the ways, I guess, to make these um issues be less or these issues be not so much taking up our brain energy our time so that we focus on what matters and I think that 
comes down to what our expectations are. And yet, like you said, what are the, um, I don't know, how a leader could look like or what the leader could do uh, or manager or whichever. Um, I don't know, do you use the words interchangeably? Because uh, I think lately the word manager is getting a bit of a, a negative connotation I find than uh, a leader. So maybe we could look at then um, what are we, what we want leader to be, what we want our managers to be, how we want them to act so that we all live happily ever after, so to say. <laughs> what are yeah. your thoughts on that? Sure. Well, first of all, I just want to point out that anyone could be a leader. So even the people that you're coaching are leaders yeah. in their own way. Yeah, um, and so I think it's just as much like, what do we want our supervisors to be? Or what do we want to look like as a supervisor or a leader, you yeah. know, ourselves? Like, how can yeah. we, you know, the, all the things that we see as we, we don't like in our own supervisor yeah. or manager, how can we break that cycle or how can we right. show up in a way that not only are your intentions good, but also your actions yeah. reflect that? <laughs> yes. I love that. Aligning your intentions with actions. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. in terms of like manager versus leader, and this is just amazing to me that you know, even like, so I have a master's in business and even mm -hmm. when I got my master's, there were, there were classes on how to be a manager, like how mm -hmm. to manage people, but there weren't classes on how to lead people. Mm -hmm. So the difference is almost like a manager kind of pushes, like, like pushes you toward doing this, whereas a leader pulls. Mm -hmm. So like a leader, a leader, like the way I look at it is, you know, a manager is going to tell you how you should do something, whereas a leader yeah. will help you find the best way that you are able to do it. And, and the, the, the other thing I think about leadership is that I, I think what gets lost a lot, especially in the humanitarian sector where we're all mm -hmm. rushing around and like, yeah. we forget about the people, our, our mm. own people. We remember the people, the beneficiaries on the ground, but we forget yeah. our own teams and how important it is to make sure that they're following us, to yeah. make sure that they understand. And if you, if you introduce a new thing, like a new activity or a new way of yeah. doing things to make sure that they also buy into it and that you're not just telling them what to do, but you're leading them. You're, you're getting them to, yes. um, be motivated enough to do it for themselves because they want yeah, to. Exactly. And I think the other distinction that I was having in my head in terms of manager versus leader is that manager, I think in my mind, is someone who ensures the procedures are working fine, the policies mm -hmm. are being implemented. It's a bit more like a um, I, I don't like the word bureaucratic, but someone who ensures that systems are functioning, I guess, is, is in my head. I don't know if that's true, but at least this is how I'm imagining. And it's not, we're not saying it's bad. We're just saying that this is like maybe some of the ways people visualize it is what a manager does. Mm -hmm. uh, while the leader in my head is someone who not only inspires you to do things in the way that you find how to do it, but my job as a leader, for instance, just to say, this is where we're going and why it's important that we're going there and everyone else finds their way and tools to get there, knowing the teamwork, knowing their own capacity and knowing their own strengths. So I think that's the, mm -hmm. the distinction that maybe in my head is crystallizing. And the other things that I just wanted to also show, like in terms of... Um, leaders so what I hear often from my clients is that so leader is someone who's leading by example and I think mm -hmm. that's such a powerful way of also looking at it right so if the leader says something or aspires to doing something he or she's convinced and really aligned with their own principles of why we're doing it and and then it just draws me without the leader even saying anything 
And this is, of course, maybe a bit of a magical way of looking at it, but, <laughs> but at least I think this is the aspiration that we're thinking of. And, and also the other crucial word that, uh, Tori, you mentioned is the trust part. And I think this is mm -hmm. such a, I don't know, I can't emphasize enough how much we need it, even in our usual interactions. But I think, especially if you're in a leadership position, how are you showing your trust? And not only saying words, I guess, but also in your making people accountable in a way that is trustworthy, right? And not just uh, ticking the boxes, okay, you did this, you didn't do this, but trusting that the other person can do the best they can. Um, and uh, another one that I think stresses, mm -hmm. uh, many people stress is that leader having a unique style to lead and also being okay with other people having their own unique style of working and being able to integrate all of that into the team and not just assuming that um, everyone's going to be the same or everyone's going to be doing things the same way or yeah so I guess um, in that regard the pulling Uh, as you said, as a leader, might be very important. Instead of pushing people how to do it, pulling people to doing things together. So anyway, this is what comes up in terms of um, mm. who we want the leaders to be um, and what we aspire to. Uh, and maybe here is... Now the time, Tori, that we could speak about the tools that um, leaders or anyone who wants to aspire to these qualities, right? Like we said, we consider everyone to be a leader of their lives, of their um, uh, communities, of their families. Um, so in terms of having all the tools necessary to work with teams efficiently, Um, what is available and what we could offer to people that they could use. Yeah, well, I just want to back up a minute before getting into that, because mm -hmm. I, 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 I'd like to just talk a little bit more about um, some of the misconceptions that leaders have about mm what they think is caring for their teams that ends up mm. being actually in, in some ways the opposite. Yeah. Um, so this goes back to like what you're saying about trust, but uh, what I see is that I, you know, when someone comes to me as a supervisor um, and they have a question, yeah. Now, the caring thing to do in many people's minds is to answer that question, to just tell them what to do, mm. and then they just go on their way. Yeah. But actually, I would argue that the caring thing to do, not all the time, but some of the times, is to actually ask them how they would solve the problem. And this is where coaching comes in. So. Um, when I learned, when I started learning coaching and applying it in my own leadership, you know, I was used to being a very like telling manager or supervisor, like when somebody would come to me, of course you want to help them. So by helping them, you think you're helping them by just answering their question. Yeah. But actually what I realized after learning how to coach and since coaching many people and even you know, through seeing my own students and the, the course that I teach, um, when they learn how to be a coach or how to, how to ask questions yeah. to their supervisees, mm. um, then what happens is they transform the way they lead. So they'll yeah. go from a telling to a asking, and that is very powerful shift. And it's also, I would argue, like I said, because in these days, you know, there's a lot of focus on, um, you know, how do we, how do we empower our national staff? How do we, you know, uh, train or, or bring people to, to actually replace us so that we can advance, but also so that they're strong enough to advance professionally. 
How do we get people to think for themselves? Yeah. These are where, you know, just answering somebody's question or telling them what to do is not going to help them. And so yeah. this is one of the things that I tell my students and, and it takes them a little while because they're so used to, they're uncomfortable with not answering that somebody's yeah. question with not telling them what to do. Right. Cause that's what, mm -hmm. you know, that's what my role is. Well, yeah, yeah sometimes but, and you know, in the beginning too, people are like, when you first start asking questions, it might be mm. a little bit like of a change for someone like, whoa, why is suddenly this, my, my supervisor is asking me what I should do. Yeah. And in the beginning, that might be a bit of a shock, but eventually what I've seen is that people become more motivated because it's less micromanagement and more empowering. Mm -hmm. And they find an even better way than the supervisor would have because they're closer to the problem. Yeah. So that's one way I see that leaders think that they're caring, but they're not always, um, um, I, I don't think it's always in their the best interest. Mm. Um, another way is, is like what I talked about before in terms of um, creating boundaries on time and, yeah. and, and when to be available, uh, being available all the time is really actually being available none of the time, because yeah. when you're available all the time, you're always going to have something in the back of your head that you have yeah. to do when somebody comes to you and interrupts you, um, and asks, you know, for your help in solving a question, which once again, if we teach people to solve problems themselves through methods like coaching, yeah. then they'll be able to, you know, proactively do that. And they won't even come to you eventually. They'll just, yeah. you know, learn to, to do it for themselves. So um, I, I just think that's an important point to highlight before, you know, we talk about actual tools. And of course, I just mentioned uh, coaching. And I think that is like a really good tool. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the kind of coaching that I teach is actually like how to have a 45 minute formal coaching conversation with your direct reports mm. um, and how to get them to, whether it's solve a problem for themselves or uh, develop professionally. Um, but the main thing is like, you know, how do you use the best practices in coaching in order to empower your staff, in order to, help others around you um, to, to feel um, confident and, and motivated and yes. what they're supposed to do. Yes, absolutely. So um, knowing all of this and knowing that um, the shift in the mindset is, I guess, what we're advocating is what's important for anyone to being more in the leading role, being in the um, inspiring and trusting role than telling people what to do, right? So mm. knowing that this is all of this possible with any mind shift, um, we also offering uh, tools to use for people. I mean, be it individual uh, coaching or um, through courses, whichever is more convenient for people. So I know that you've come up, Tori, with um, tools that people can use remotely using a course. So tell us all about it. Yeah, sure. So first of all, I mean, I have a lot of podcast episodes on coaching, like in mm. terms of being a, like leadership coaching, like, like coaching as a supervisor, which is mm. a little bit different from like, um, um, coaching an individual around like, you know, um, uh, personal growth. I mean, it's, it's more about professional development and, yeah. and solving problems within the workplace. Um, but yeah, the, I also have a, um, six week digital course, um, <laughs> in which I teach aid workers, supervisors and others. I've had technical assistants. I've had, you know, people who are office assistants take the course mm -hmm. and also be able to apply it in other ways. But the yeah. main thing is that you walk away with a skill set 
um, and tools that you can use to be a better listener, a better communicator, understand how to ask powerful questions, understand how to bring somebody to solve their own problem or to develop professionally in a way that works for them. Um, and then you come up with at the end of a the uh, the conversation, you'll be coming up with an action plan mm -hmm. where they can concretely follow up on, you know, whatever it is you all have agreed on to yeah. be able to take the next steps. And part of coaching is also like the, the coaching that I teach is also like how, you know, it's not about just what do you think you need to do in mm. order to overcome this problem? It's also, yeah. well, what if you have an obstacle in that process? What are you going yeah. to do? So like asking those kinds of questions so that this yeah. person walks away, your direct report walks away, feeling confident and ready to go and like take action um, and, and, and do something that they came up with themselves and not yeah. something that comes from you as a supervisor, which is very, very powerful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think the other one is also that um, we want to strive as a supervisee, for instance, even if I did create a problem or even if I was solving a problem in the process, things didn't go the way I thought they would go. And, you know, like, like in life usually happens. Then I guess the other thing is that we don't want our leaders to be saying, you see, because of this, you shouldn't have done this or you shouldn't have done that or whatever the case is. So, you know, eliminating the blame game, I guess, is also what we're all trying to uh, come to. And in that sense, um, giving the responsibility or the even initial ideas of how you want to solve it to the person who's actually working on it then feels the more responsibility. And even if something did go wrong uh, in some way, the, the person can then come with other solutions of how to solve it instead of thinking, oh my God, I did it the way my boss told me to, things didn't go, and that's my responsibility. I messed it up or whatever the other dramas that we come to. Totally so true. Yeah. And we, we talk a lot about trust building. So, in yeah. order to, you know, as you know, as a coach, you know, you have to have a lot of trust with your reports in order to be yeah. able to have that coaching relationship. Yeah. And part of that, like you just said, is trusting that if they fail that, you know, supporting them through that. And, but yeah. the thing is, even though there might be some, like, you know, that might take you back in terms of like, you feel like, wow, I should just, you know, told them what to do. It'd be much easier. Yeah. But in the, in the long run, they'll feel way more confident, way more empowered. And that's what we ultimately all want as supervisors and leaders, right? We want people to feel able to make their own decisions and like they're supported by us and they're, you know, the leaders. So yeah, but that's exactly. a really good point. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that um, essentially what we're wanting is that trust being implemented in different ways so that people not only hear but also feel that it's mm. there right not only in the good times but also in the times when things didn't go the way we thought it would go but still we feel like trusted to talk about it to come up with new strategies to overcome it and then also uh, feel like we have the responsibility, the accountability for it. So yeah, so absolutely. So um, as I understand, the course is now open for enrollment. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, it's now open for enrollment. And just to say mm -hmm. too, so there are a lot of coaching courses out there, mm -hmm. um, but the way this one is a little different is, um, first of all, it's specifically for the aid sector. So it's only yeah. other humanitarians taking the course. So one thing I love about it is I have a mix of people globally, all different backgrounds who yeah. learn from each other um, as well as from me. Mm. Uh, and I also pair them up in terms of uh, accountability partners. So oh, you will yes. have a partner throughout the course and yeah. you learn together, you meet together. And what I see is a lot of times, even after the course, they continue coach, coaching each other uh, yeah. around different issues. So they actually benefit from almost like you have your own co co coach that you've learned yeah. alongside of in terms of um, some of these leadership issues. 
Um, but also, yeah, the course is uh, six weeks, as I said, and it um, is open for enrollment now until September 29th is the last day to sign up. Mm -hmm. uh, the start date is October 4th. Mm -hmm. And then it's about a four hour commitment weekly. And that's mm -hmm. um, 30 minutes of video. And then they'll meet with their accountability partners sometime during the week. And then we have an hour and a half Zoom call on Thursdays where we practice coaching. So I've structured the, cause I've been, I know how it is. I've been through yeah. so many trainings where you walk away and you're like, what did I just learn? So I have purposely structured this to be as practical as possible. So as soon as you learn all the skills like listening, challenging, acknowledging, uh, powerful questions, you immediately apply them with your team and you can mm -hmm. immediately see results. So that's what yeah. I love about the course. But. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the other thing is that, you know, because we are so stretched on time, as we said, right? So oftentimes we don't have time and we may think that, oh, I don't have time for courses like this uh, or something like this, then think of it as an investment to saving time in the future, right? Because oftentimes uh, we may actually spend a lot more time problem solving every time, which could be systematically solved with the shift in your mind and also with that trust that you develop, the skill that you develop with others. And that could actually save you a lot more time in the long run uh, by taking a course like this and applying it and then seeing what comes up for you as a result. And then you can measure yourself in terms of how much time you might be saving later in order not to extinguish a fire that keeps coming up rather you know that there are many other people who can extinguish a fire or even not create a fire to begin with so so yeah. true and just to add one thing to that because that's a really good point so what's really interesting too is that well, some of my students when they start giving space for coaching mm. you know coaching like in this sense is like it's a step back from all the day-to-day -day work yes. meetings and all of this. So giving that space to someone, these things come up that wouldn't ordinarily. And so yeah. I get feedback like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was an issue until yeah. I gave this space for this coaching conversation. And now yeah. I realize that this is something that's been going on for a long time. And I had no idea. No one ever told me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So that can so save time too. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of coaching. Uh, I'm sure Tori, like you are. So I think for me, I want to advocate for coaching under any circumstances, be it in emergency, non-emergency, whatever you're working for. And the reason is very simple, is that you can stop and reflect. I think that's the most important part is that stopping and reflecting uh, and trying and, and possibly being proactive in solving things rather than later when things come to an explosion point, trying to solve it, which then costs more, I mean, brain energy, more of relationships that we could have probably prevented it had we looked at it on time, right? So therefore, so coaching true. tool can be so powerful applying it regularly uh, be it through the course be it individually be it on your own as well so that's why I want to advocate for doing any type of coaching under any circumstances yeah yeah and this kind of goes back to what we were saying at the very beginning of getting caught up in all the results versus yeah. focusing on people if you yeah. focus on people, if you take the time to be able to build and really focus on your team or others, it will pay off substantially more in the long run versus yeah. focusing on the results. The results will come if you focus on the people, but we need to put people first. Yes, absolutely. Amazing. So I hope that uh, <laughs> all of us, who, all of the people who are listening can join your program, Tori, and I will put <laughs> maybe the link to the um, to the sign up form or uh, yes, uh, the website at least, right? And then people can go directly and sign up. And then, yeah, improve their teams, their own lives to begin with. I think, uh, you know, as long as we even improve our own way of thinking, I think everyone else around will notice it and start making change. So that's why another reason why I love coaching. So it's amazing that 
Tori, you created this wonderful course and you are enrolling it. And we want to make the difference in the world. And that happens with every person, right? Yes, that's right. And it starts with you yourself. Yes. And then, you know, radiates out from there. So yeah, exactly. I'll definitely Absolutely. share the, the details with you. And yeah, thank you so much for having me on this podcast. And I will definitely Pleasure. be having you on mine soon. So Yay. everyone look forward to that. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. So our job, Tori and I, we advocate for coaching and mm -hmm. using the tools available just to improve our lives in the best way we can so that we you know, don't have to problem solve so much, but rather prosper. So having said that, thank you so much, Terry, for being here and talking about this uh, leading and managing topics. And this is definitely a topic that I think we can talk for a long time, but at least we try to cover as much in the very short period and we'll definitely continue talking about it. So, for sure. Thank you so Sounds much. <laughs> yes, and we encourage all of you to sign up for Tori's course and we'll put the link uh, in the notes. And yes, and I hope that we'll hear from each other, Tori. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks, Asa. <laughs>